Integrated circuits are far from the only industry facing supply chain woes. More than 500 global companies are using the Import Expo to create links in China and to strengthen their own supply chains. For more on this, let's turn to Ottaviano Canuto. He's a senior fellow in the Global Economy and Development Program at the Brookings Institution, a think tank here in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ellen, for having me here. Well, we've been hearing warnings for months about gift buying, for example, for the holidays coming up and other product issues around the world. But how long will these problems last and how long might the impact linger? Well, it will stay definitely at least until next year. The, uh, the dismissal of the backlogs and so on will happen only gradually as the underlying imbalance between supply and demand is addressed in each of the areas. See, we have had, uh, since the last year, a sequence of, uh, of uh, supply and demand shocks in a context of a very integrated global uh, economy, as today we have the, uh, basically the, the, the role played by supply chains. And, and then we had, uh, on the supply side, obviously, the factory close closures in, in Asia, in China, at the beginning of, of COVID. And then we had lockdowns in many countries. And subsequently, uh, with the opening, uh, we had a congestion in logistics network for transporting goods, capacity constraints in the face of sudden increase in demand and labor shortage. And this has combined to affect negatively the availability of inputs and products worldwide. It's important to realize that we have both sides of this equation. For instance, in the case of the demand, uh, there was a, a substantial uh, change in the composition uh, uh, of demand, the substitution of consumption of contact intensive service by electronic home goods, for instance, led to an explosion in, in demand for semiconductors, for example. And at the same time, uh, particularly in the case of the advanced economies, the fiscal support packages enabled the families to maintain their disposable income during the pandemic. This has happened to such an extent that in September, Consumers in the U.S. were able to use accumulated savings to keep shopping at the pace above the increase in their personal incomes. And we are running to the, uh, uh, the holidays and so on. And the companies are trying to, to replace their, their stocks and so on. But it's not only the issue of the supply chains. We also have uh, a huge difficulty, a huge barrier uh, with respect to the energy price shocks. Uh, because... Uh, which shows how the, the road to decarbonization will be bumpy, right? You had low gas stocks in Europe. You had, the, uh, for good reasons, restrictions on the availability of coal in China and in India, uh, capacity limits in the production of shale oil here in the U.S. Uh, you had the, the hurricane Ida, and all that led to rising uh, gas prices, uh, and, you know, closures, uh, temporary closures of uh, energy use in cities in China. Uh, and, uh, and, and now a substitution of gas with uh, oil. So, Italiano, so, I mean, this is, yeah. there's just so, so much here. And, it, and as you said, it could take months for this to resolve. But when you look at events like CIIE, in China, where people are trying to make something happen, trying to find workarounds. How important are these events for trying to come out of this crisis? All right, look, one important aspect, and which is definitely uh, not the case specifically to China, but it is here in this country, and it's also to some extent in Europe, is the labor shortage, because that's another source of shock as well. Uh, just to give you all an idea, uh, looking at the tendencies uh, regarding retirement uh, of the labor force, uh, something uh, above 5 million Americans last year, uh, from uh, uh, mid-2020 to uh, uh, mid-2021, decided to leave the workforce, uh, decided to retire. And of those, uh, an estimate made by uh, uh, an economist of the Federal Reserve Bank, show that 3 million people decided to leave the labor force 
for whatever be the reasons. Maybe be, uh, because they are old and they they uh, they didn't want to face the risks of uh, of the infection and so on, or because they felt richer with the uh, the evaluation. The fact of the matter is that you have a shrinkage <laughs> in the labor force, and that's why the guys are uh, here in the U.S. having difficulties to 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 find in, uh, people to work. We are certainly seeing uh, it everywhere, and you are so right about the uh, great resignation. We've been talking about it for weeks now. We are out of time, but we'd love to have you back on to have an entire show about that. Ottaviano Canuto, thank you so much for joining us from here in Washington.